Apple's iOS 9 and watchOS 2 updates are finally rolling out, so if you haven't prepared yet, it's time to back up your devices and head on over to the settings app to get yourself some fresh iOS goodness. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Dom, and today we're taking a look at the top iOS 9 features available. And also, if you'd like to know what's new with the Apple Watch and what new features are coming with watchOS 2, I'll be sure to leave a link to that video below. First up, for all you power users out there, we have a new low power mode, which will help conserve some of that precious battery life when you get towards the end. It can be enabled within the settings app and conserves battery by limiting background app activity and some visual effects. And you'll be prompted to enable this when the device hits 20 and 10% before it dies. Next up, we have a redesigned app switcher. Yep. That's it. Not really any extra functionality here, but it looks a bit prettier. Everything functions exactly the same. Just double press the home button and swipe up to kill apps. Apple did, however, remove the recent contact section that lined the top in iOS 8. Luckily, those recent contacts are still around, but are now found in the relocated and semi-redesigned spotlight search. It now lives to the left of the home screen, though you can still access it by swiping down on the home screen as well. Kind of weird having this in two places, but the version on the left has more features and it comes along with some goodies. So here you'll find Siri suggestions, which is a combination of recent contacts and apps. And there's also nearby places and recent news headlines below it. And this area is auto-populated by your use and your interests, so it'll change from time to time. iOS 9 also brings along a refreshed notes app, and there's a bit of a new experience here with some pretty nifty features. Any of these new features can be found above the keyboard or at the bottom of the app, and the notes app now allows you to create pretty nifty lists that you can actually use to check off items. There are also some new formatting options available to make your text look a little bit fancier if that's your thing and not only can you embed photos and take photos to embed but you can also create little drawings or sketches which might come in handy if you had an iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil maybe but these can also be embedded into the notes and saved for future use. Siri has also been given a fresh look and feel with iOS 9 and now closely resembles what's found on the Apple Watch. There's a handful of new commands available, but your best bet is asking Siri what those are for yourself. Siri can now do things like create reminders based on email or text conversations and even location-based reminders, which is extremely helpful, but you can now also use Spotlight Search to retrieve some of the same Siri results as well without the need to talk to Siri. Apple has added a couple of new apps to the mix as well that you may want to know about. The first of which is the News app, and this is Apple's new curated news reader, and it's pretty simple to use. You can set it up based on categories and publications that you're into and let iOS 9 do the rest. Just launch the news app and sift through recent headlines and tap on one to read more in a streamlined version of the website. Just text and images without all of the other clutter. There's also a new iCloud Drive app, which is actually hidden by default. And this new app can actually be enabled through the settings app under iCloud Drive settings and will appear on the home screen. It's not much special, but it will allow you to view your iCloud Drive documents, delete them, move them, and create new folders. But unfortunately, there's no upload function at the moment. Jumping into the Maps app, we'll find a new feature that isn't really new in the navigation department, but new to iOS 9. There are now transit directions available, which is handy if you've absolutely refused to use literally almost any other navigation app up until now. So you can get those important transit directions natively without the need for a third party app. Cool, but just Apple playing catch up here. Moving over to the iPad, there are a few standout features that you absolutely need to know about. Apple has reimagined the multitask on an iPad and given it some new features. Slide over will allow you to slide a new app over from the right side of the screen and this secondary app will actually just take up a third of the display and you can easily swap it out for another compatible app by swiping down from the top of the slide over view. It's a very quick and easy way to accomplish two things at once if that's your thing but it gets even better than that. You can actually take this slide over app and drag it from the left to enable a full on split view of two apps side by side. Of course, this is limited to apps that actually support this new view, but as more apps become compatible, I can see this being a very useful feature. Hell, it's already useful with the basic set of apps available with iOS 9, but let me know what you think about split view in the comments. Of course, none of this is new to tablets or mobile devices in general, but it's nice to finally have an iOS. There's also a new picture in picture view for videos 
and FaceTime calls on iPad. You can easily back out of a video that you're watching and do something else with a small little video window that can be moved around or tossed to the side if it's in the way. It can be moved all around the screen and you can even maximize the video again if you want to get back to it. Definitely one of my favorite features here. And if you've been looking for keyboard features, iOS 9 has you covered on the iPad and iPhone 6S with easy text selection. Just tap and hold with two fingers or use 3D Touch on the 6S to quickly move the cursor around and select text. It takes a little getting used to, but it works pretty great for making quick edits without the need to tap 5,000 times to get to the right place. Along with that, the new iPad keyboard also includes some quick shortcut buttons for cut, copy, paste, and undo, which you can find in the top left corner of the iPad keyboard. Again, just some things to make your text editing and typing a little bit quicker. So that about wraps it up for these top features of iOS 9 on iPhone and iPad. And like I said, if you want to know some of the new features that are coming with the Apple Watch and Watch OS 2, I'll be sure to leave that video linked below for you. But let me know what you think about iOS 9 in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave it a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching, everybody. This is Dom, and I'll catch you in the next video.